What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to take a trash stump and turn it into this sweet looking stool. This is what we're starting with right here. And honestly, I really have no idea what I want to do. I do know that I need to get the top and the bottom flat and I'm going to use a type of router sled, I guess, to do that. I am going to cut down some of this MDF to just above what I have on the top surface right here. Then we'll make a little sled for the router, we'll flatten one side, flip it over, flatten the other, and then we at least know that this thing's not going to rock anywhere. The bottom of this currently is actually pretty good, the top is pretty bad. The first thing I needed to do to get this project started was to make a form so that I could slide my router sled on that. So if you're doing a big slab that you need to flatten, you would typically use uh, two by fours if you can get some flat ones or a piece of metal something that's nice and flat and the edges of this MDF that we just cut will be absolutely perfect cut a couple of pieces shorter on the miter saw to do some cross members and we had a nice flat form that then we could slap a little router sled together that my bigger router will slide through and allow us to flatten both sides of this stump perfectly flat <coughs> We obviously are going to be using a pretty large diameter router flattening bit and you want to make sure you have a pretty decent quality one because you don't want it flinging a blade or chipping a blade off and throwing it at you. And this Amano one that I've been using, highly recommended. I've put this through a lot of material with great, great success. It's obviously pretty important to make sure the stump or anything you're flattening doesn't rock around while you are working on that workpiece. So I used some composite shims to make sure the stump didn't rock around and then we're ready to flatten the first side. It is a disastrously messy job to do this kind of router flattening. So be sure to spend plenty of time afterwards cleaning yourself up and your shop space around you. As you can see, pretty straightforward with the frame that we have built around the stump where we are able to slide the router around and just shave off that top portion perfectly flat. If you have to use multiple passes, it's no big deal. I think I did pretty much two passes on each side so that I wasn't taking away too much material at one time because I didn't actually have the stump fastened down. I just had it sitting there with gravity and then the shims held it flat. Once we had the top flat, we're able to flip that over remove the shims and that flat portion we just flattened is sitting on the table so then we can flatten the opposite side and we got our two sides perfectly parallel to one another and a stump that will not rock around same concept can go for flattening a big slab if that is something that you need to do the plan is to put a DIY cookie top on the top of this, which is going to be the seat of the stool. And we need something that is strong that we can fasten that to. So I used a chisel to chip away a couple of portions on the stump to make it flat. And then I used some construction adhesive to bond a chunk of, it's a harder wood, I think it was hickory, into place. Now, why did I use construction adhesive? Because as you can see, there are lots of big pores or gaps inside that stump and the construction adhesive will actually fill the gap and allow a good bond whereas if you were to use a wood glue it wouldn't fill the gap so you would have lots of air gaps in there and the wood glue would probably fail over time as you can clearly see there's a giant hole that i am marking out a piece of cardboard right here i'm going to cut that down to a rough matching dimension and then use a hot glue gun to fasten that cardboard in place so that we can pour the foam in here and it's not just going to come pouring out of that giant hole now you'll see later on i thought i got all the holes but keep watching you'll see if i actually got them i really think that hot glue guns are a very underrated tool every time i whip that thing out it is very very useful and i wish i would take it out even more often because i often forget about it but good bond and it's very quick. Now, now you probably agree with me, it's a great idea to cover all of our hard work so far up because it could be a disaster pouring this foam. I 
Cod, put some gloves on. Ooh, this could be so bad. Now, I would be lying if I said I wasn't a little bit nervous to do this. It could be disastrously messy, and we only get one shot at this, and the whole thing could potentially be ruined. So I was definitely a little bit nervous, and it was a little bit cold based on the instructions to do this, so I didn't know what was going to happen. Oh, this doesn't look like a good idea. Looks like it's staying in. Oh yeah, uh-oh, here it goes. As this foam started to react and it quickly started bubbling up, I thought we were screwed. But honestly, a little bit anticlimactic. Uh -oh. So I did what I could to scrape up the foam that was leaking out of this gaping hole in the side that we obviously missed. But in the end, the chemical reaction must have slowed it down enough that not too much came out. My mic wasn't on a second ago when I pulled the plastic off, but in general, everything worked out quite well. We had one little blowout right here, which honestly, that was a hole I just missed. We'll see if we can, we should be able to clean that out right there and get it back to looking like it was just the bark. Using a wire brush first to make sure that any pieces of bark that might be loose get broken off of this thing because I don't want a bunch of debris in my epoxy once we are going to be painting it onto this stump. Then a quick rub over with the shot vac brush just to make sure all the dust is out of there as well. Then it is time to mix up a little bit of epoxy. A little bit goes a long way. I don't really know how much I had in there, but I am using some old West System stuff I had, and I'm pretty sure the hardener is not supposed to look amber, but we were already into this project, and I figured a little bit of amber tint on the bark wouldn't even be noticeable once everything's set up. Then I just used a cheap chip brush, which you do need to keep an eye out with these that you don't get any bristles pulled out and stuck in your material. That goes for paint or epoxy, and we just brushed it on. Nothing too exciting. Remember that gap we had at the top of the stump? Yesterday I put a can of this great stuff in the top there. I didn't film because I was going to put this second can in the top, but it ends up we don't actually have to because as you can see, I actually need to shave a little bit off of there, but I think the foam idea worked out fairly well. This great stuff actually seems like a better foam. This stuff kind of seems a little bit crunchy, kind of like the stuff you would put in a, uh, a flower pot that could hold some water if you're doing like a floral arrangement or something like that. Not that I've done that, but I think the whole idea is gonna work out quite well. And then the epoxy on the stump itself looks really good. Once I had cut the top off of this chunk of foam, I actually noticed the inside wasn't completely set up yet, which probably makes sense on the bottle why it says a maximum of three inches. It probably would have set up if I followed the instructions. What's the fun in doing that? As you can see, I'm using a hammer to bust off a little bit of that epoxy that bubbled up across the bottom, and that went real quick. I did go back with a brush and make sure that if any of the bark had chipped off instead of just the epoxy, that I sealed that up again. Why am I making shavings out of hickory? Because that gap that we filled with cardboard, I wanted to fill it with something. So we're going to put some spiraled wood shavings in there and again pour a little bit of epoxy over the top to seal them in place and make a kind of display window, which I think is a pretty cool accent. And it worked out pretty well. It would have worked out even better if that tape that I put on didn't totally leak out all of the epoxy that I put in there. I had to uh, get Amazon to nicely overnight us another case of epoxy so that I could fill this in once everything leaked out all over the workbench. But you lose some and you win some. Just like with every epoxy pour we've ever done, once we get it in there, quick run over with a torch to pop the bubbles, and then you can kind of blow around the epoxy a little bit if it's not perfectly level. And while that epoxy sets up, at least in our case, it is time to move on to the sort of second phase of this project, and that is that DIY cookie top. I have this beautiful piece of hickory. It's about an inch and a quarter thick, and I'm going to form a slab, and then I'm going to cut a round cookie out of this. Now, 
You can obviously use an actual cookie top with live edge, but I wasn't able to get one in time. There was one available that I could have gotten off Facebook Marketplace, but I was concerned it wouldn't be dry in the time frame that I wanted to work on it. So it's this piece of hickory. I whacked it to dimension on the miter saw, and then we're just going to flatten it real quick at the grizzly jointer and planer with the helical heads on that hickory. Very, very nice finish, and it allows you to cut through that material so much easier. Then we're going to surface that fourth side over at the table saw, and then I got a biscuit joiner, everybody. I haven't bought new tools in such a long time, and I wanted to get a biscuit jointer because I'm probably going to make, be making some kitchen tabletops and I am quickly using the biscuit jointer to help me with the alignment of this cookie. Why, Tyler, do you have double biscuit joints? That was just a dumb mistake. I cut all the biscuit joints and then realized that I had the biscuit way near the top, and that could translate through the material and show the biscuit, so I just cut a new joint further towards the bottom, and we still had plenty of surface material for a good glue bond. Biscuits don't actually add any structural integrity to the project, but they help you align the slab very, very quickly, which makes the glue up go quite a bit faster. Now we do need to turn this glued up slab into a cookie, which most of the time is round. So I'm marking out the center here and then drilling a little hole so we can go over to the bandsaw where I have my circle cutting jig that I made back in the day. We can put that hole on the nail that is on the circle cutting jig and cut out our circle, which is now going to be our hickory cookie. Once that cookie is cut out, I would typically go right over to the router, but we had a very rough edge from the bandsaw along the outer ring, so I just decided to do majority of the sanding beforehand. And I gotta tell ya, sand and hickory, even with this fantastic Merca sander in its 6 inch disc, it sucks sand hickory. It is so hard, it takes such a long time to get anything accomplished. But in the end, nice and smooth, all the way up to 220 grit. And now we are ready to move over to the router. So this is my double trim router table that I made not too long ago. And I am using a 45 degree chamfer bit on this router. And we are going to chamfer the bottom 45 degrees. In the top we are going to put a round over in there. Now I'm going over to the big router because I had a round over in there already. And that's kind of the whole reason why I wanted another router table. And that double trim router table actually gives me two routers in one router table. So it works out very well. You can see how convenient it is to hop back and forth between those tools. I did have one little accent point in here, this knot that was in the top of the cookie, and I wanted this to be there because I wanted to put some epoxy in there, sand it down so that we had a nice little focal point on top of the stool. Now it is time to get some finish on this stool top, and I'm going to go with my tried and true favorite finish of General Finishes Sanding Sealer and General Finishes Enduro Clear Polyurethane. Spraying the sanding sealer, which is a thicker material with a 1.3 millimeter tip. And then we will go through and do three coats of the top coat with about an hour, hour and 20 minutes between coats and a little bit of sanding. We're going to spray that top coat with a one millimeter tip. And I do got to say, this finish, I've got this thing dialed. It comes out so nice, as you can see in just a second here. When that cures and levels out, it'll be perfectly smooth. Looks great. Now the time has come to attach the top to the stump base. What I would have liked to have done is drill some holes, use some screws, and then plug that. But for the life of me, I cannot find my plug cutter. What I'm going to do as an alternative is use these very nice looking TENS stainless steel screws. Now TENS is a brand that makes Decmate screws that we probably have all used from the home center. You can't get these TENS stainless steel here in the United States, but I have a deal coming up with them. So I have some of these in hand and I'm going to use them and just leave the heads exposed, kind of an industrial look. So. These little doohickeys are, are typically used to transfer dowel hole locations, but I'm setting them on top of those blocks that we construction adhesived into place, making sure our cookie was symmetrical on that bench, and then banging it down so I know where to drill the holes. I'm going from bottom to top here with a thinner bit, a small bit, so we don't have, have any blowout on the opposite side, and then flipping that over and drilling a larger hole 
top to bottom. Again, that's just so we don't splinter anything out on the top. Making sure our orientation is good, and then we do need to countersink for these TENS screws. Once we got the hickory top in place, there is a decent amount of heft to this stool, so I don't think it's really going to slide around anywhere, and honestly, it helps hold that carpet stationary. I think it looked out pretty good. Nice conversation piece right in our living room. Well, that is a wrap on the stool right there. It actually turned out pretty cool, and I had a really hard time getting all of the footage that I ended up taking for this video down to something short, so I hope you guys enjoyed that video. The kids do like to use it as a tea table more than actually as a stool, but it is in a nice place by all the library books. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you got some inspiration from it. If you did, please hammer that thumbs up button. Even if you didn't, please hammer that thumbs up button as it helps us out a ton and gets this video in front of more eyes. I'm DIY Tyler. You guys have a good one.